Ever since that infamous Saturday Night Live skit with Will Ferrell, the cowbell has been this cultish rallying cry for drummers. Well, what I want to do in this lesson is I want to take the cowbell and break it out of its normal confines. I want to set it in a pop groove, but kind of do so in a little bit of a different way. Now, there's going to be three levels to this lesson. So if you're a beginner, you can now like, grab onto level one. If you're an intermediate player, you can grab onto level two. And if you're a more advanced player, you can put some ghost notes in there and grab onto level three. So the first thing is, is we need to get down what is this cowbell rhythm that you heard me playing in the intro clip. Well, it's going to be a dotted eighth note. A dotted eighth note takes up three sixteenth notes. So if we have a three note rhythm, it's going to take three bars to come back around to one. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I play the dotted eighth note, which is going to be like this if I'm counting it, here's my count. 3 and 4 and 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e and a 4 e and a 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e and a 4 e and a 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e and a 4 e and a and then we're back on 1. Now the important thing about that is we need to realize where it loops around so that we can know how all these parts line up. So first we need to get that rhythm down. The next thing is to figure out where the snare backbeat lies. All right? I like to do that in relation to with how my cowbell is playing. So if I'm playing my cowbell and we have dotted eighth notes, it's going to go one E and a, uh, and then I'm hitting a two. So one E and a two, and an and here. One E and a two, and. Then we'll have an E of three. One E and a two, and three E and a, uh, and then it's going to actually hit together with four. One E and a two and three E and a four E and a. Uh, it hits on the a uh of four and it will hit again on the and of two, right? And the E, uh, excuse me, the and of one of the next measure and the E of two of the next measure. So all together, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a. And then it loops back. So beats three, four, one, two, three, four look just like beats one, two, three, four, one, two. Does that make sense? The first half mirrors what the second half looks like. So once you get through six beats, it actually repeats itself. In my kick drum, I'm just going to be playing quarter notes. So one, two, three, four, or what is commonly referred to as four on the floor. And last but not least, we have to add that redheaded stepchild. Far too often, I ignore my hi-hat and I just kind of leave him there during a groove. Well, the problem is, is whenever we begin to incorporate percussion into a groove, it can start to sound empty very quickly. So I find that a good way to keep the rhythm driving is to use that hi-hat foot. So we're just going to play eighth notes on the hi-hat underneath what all this is doing. So one and two and three and four and. That's going to be the intro level to this group. Now, if you want to take it up one notch from like a playa to a gangsta, we can take it up one notch and we can take the hi-hat and instead of playing it just on eighth notes, we can split those eighth notes between, between the two feet. 
So it's going to go one and two and what I would call walking with the feet. One and two and three and four and And last, if you want to kind of take it to the very next level and take it to the level of being a boss, what you want to do is add some ghost notes to that. What I want to do is I want to add the ghost notes on the E and the AND of one and the E and the AND of three. Now that's going to kind of lay differently. But what's good is once you get past beats one, two, three, four, one and two, it repeats itself. So really you just need to learn six beats of this pattern and how the cowbell lays against all of this and you've got it. So what's the point of this whole lesson? Is it to promote the use of the cowbell and more music? Maybe, if that's what the music calls for. I know myself, sometimes I get caught up in what I think something should sound like based upon preconceived notions that maybe I didn't even put in place, maybe were put in place for me by modern music or old teachers or whatever. What I want to do is get you to break out of your current thinking and maybe experiment a little. Maybe put some new sounds into your playing, even if you don't think it fits in your style of music. Try it out. You might be able to find an application for it. If you haven't yet, you might want to sign up for the email list. They get all kinds of cool extras, like for instance, you would have gotten the sheet music to this lesson. You'll also get a free downloadable packet, 30 days to better doubles. I promise if you stick to it, it'll improve your double strokes. Jump over to Instagram, we're still doing one for 100. That's one sticking, one video a day for 100 days. We're on day 42 now. And if you haven't been informed, we do have a new schedule here on YouTube. I upload now on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Sundays, and sometimes a little bit in between, just depending. The links for Facebook and Twitter are below here. We always hang out and talk drums there. And if you want to take your drumming just that one step further, jump over to the website and check out a membership. And if not, I'll see you here in the next lesson.